Today we'll be talking about tries. We will start with some general information about tries, then dive into a visualization of what a specific try might look like before talking about the process of flagging. Finally, we'll talk about the general use cases for a try. Feel free to skip around at your leisure using the timestamps shown on your screen now. Before we begin though, make sure you catch up on the series thus far. I would highly recommend watching the episode on trees from last week before continuing on, since that lecture contains vital information for today's. Now if you did watch last week's episode, you'll remember that we discussed trees, and towards the end of the video, I mentioned that trees can become even more useful once you start setting restrictions on how and where data can be stored within them. We even went over an example of one known as the binary search tree. Well, a try is another one of these special trees which have special restrictions put in place to help store the data in an effective manner. This data structure is often overlooked since it is only used in specific situation. But without the use of tries within these specific situations, some important features of your computing life would be a whole lot harder. So we get it, Stephen. A try is a special tree with restrictions. But what are those restrictions, and how can they help us? Well, let's start with the basics. A try is a tree-like data structure whose nodes store letters of the alphabet in the form of characters. We can carefully construct this tree of characters in such a way which allows us to quickly retrieve words in the form of strings by traversing down a path of the tree in a certain way. These are sometimes also called digital trees or prefix trees by the computer science community, but we'll be calling them tries for today's lecture. Tries are used in the retrieval of data in the form of words, which is actually where the name try comes from, as it's smack dab in the middle of the word retrieval. Essentially, we use tries to retrieve words extremely fast by traversing down a tree of characters. This is hard to explain without showing you, so let's talk about what a try might look like. Now just like a normal tree, every try starts with a root node. Only in our case, that root node will be empty, with either some null value or a blank string. Now also stored within this node will be a set of references, all stored within an array. These references are set to null at the beginning of the try's existence, but can be slowly filled with references to other nodes. For example, let's say we are creating a try to store words that start with the letter D. The root node would contain an array, which contains a reference to a node containing the character D signifying the start of our word. Now imagine for a second that this D node also has an array containing references, only this time it contains references that point towards all characters in the English alphabet, which serve as the first two characters of a word in the English dictionary. So DA serves as the first two characters in a lot of English words, such as dad or dow or dab if you really want to go that far, and so the array contained within the D node would hold a reference to an A node. Now since there are no English words which start with DB that I know of, we wouldn't have reference to a B node, since we know we will never have to retrieve a word from our try which starts with DB. We continue this process for all letters in the alphabet, but that is a lot to visualize. So for now, let's just put up on the screen two nodes this first D node would point towards. More specifically, the node we've already added, the A node, as well as another E node. Now to continue building our try, we would simply repeat this process for all of the nodes that the D node points towards. So we'd store pointers in the A node which point towards characters in the English alphabet that serve as the first three characters of a word in the English dictionary. So you'd have a B, a D, a Y, and many many more nodes as well, but we're just going to stick with those three for now. For E, you'd have pointers which point towards nodes containing characters like N and W. Obviously, there'd be more nodes than the ones shown on your screen right now for all levels of nodes. But what we've created here is a very simple try. As you can see, it's exactly like how I said it was in the beginning. A tree-like data structure which stores characters that can be used to make words by traversing down paths. As we travel down the different paths of our tree, you can see that we make out different words. Dad, dab, day down the one path, den, do down the other. By following nodes downwards, we can easily build strings of words, which as you'll learn towards the end of the episode can be extremely useful. We can take this process even further by having one path contain multiple strings. For example, if we isolate the den path, we could go to dense, 
or Denver, or Dent, the list goes on and on. We wouldn't have to just stop at the word den, since den is also a prefix for numerous other words, and that's what makes storing data in the form of characters so useful. One path down a try can represent multiple words depending on where you stop. This does provide a bit of a problem for computer scientists though. How do we know when a word has ended? Look at the Denver path. If we wanted to retrieve the word den from this try, how would we know to stop at the end node and not continue along to the V, E, or R nodes? Well, there is actually a pretty simple fix to this, and it's known as flagging. We simply mark the end of the word by having it also point towards a flag to let the computer know that the end of a word has occurred. So in our Denver example, not only would the end nodes array contain pointers to whatever characters follow it, it would also contain a pointer to a node with a flag to tell the computer to stop there. In this case, I've just chosen a period. This way, we can construct tries in such a way wherein each word is marked by an ending point, and the different words that may branch off from that prefix can continue to use that prefix in whichever retrieval program ends up getting used. Okay, so finally it's time to talk about the general use cases for a try. If you remember back to the beginning of the episode, we said the use cases for a try were limited but extremely effective, and now we're going to talk about why. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever used the autocomplete feature on your iPhone, or spell check on a Google Doc? Because tries are used for both of these extremely useful features. This has to do with the fact that for big programs like iOS or Google Docs, they're not just storing a try containing a few words, or even all words starting with a certain letter. They're storing the entire English dictionary. Storing an entire dictionary in a try seems like a tall task, but it can be done. Each node would simply have 26 nodes connected to it, and those 26 would have 26 connected to them, and so on. Now how does this help us with autocomplete and spell check? Well, let's say you're typing out a word. For the sake of this video, let's say it's the word subscribe. When you're halfway through that word, say at S-U-B-S, the computer can start making educated guesses using both popularity data and context from previous words to make a suggestion as to what word you might be trying to type out. It does this by traversing down a try with each character we type eliminating millions and millions of possible words and making it easier to guess what the computer thinks you're trying to type. The try data structure, along with a lot of artificial intelligence, helps make autocomplete work easily on your phone. As for spell check, well, when you spell a word wrong, a spell checking algorithm can use the root of your word and compare it against try data to make an educated guess as to what you were trying to spell, as slightly misspelled words will usually have a similar path from the root of the try. By comparing the misspelled word to certain paths of the dictionary try, it can pretty accurately detect which word you were meaning to say and correct you accordingly. So there you have it, the try. Like I said, it is often underrated in the computer science world, since it can only be used in certain situations. But as I hope this video has shown you, those situations are important nonetheless. We are nearing the end of our introduction to data structure series now. Only two more left before we part ways. So stay tuned next week for when we talk about graphs. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. These videos can sometimes take quite a while to research, script out, and create visuals for, not to mention the audio recording and editing process. In total, these episodes can take up to 12 hours start to finish, so we appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you like this type of content and want to deliver it to your subscription box free of charge, click the link on the right of your screen now to subscribe to the channel. As an added bonus, if you click the bell next to the subscribe button, we'll tell the big ups at YouTube to notify you when a new video is uploaded for no additional fee. And if you can't wait that long and are craving more of my melodic voice, you can click the playlist on the left of your screen now, which will take you to a playlist containing more programming fun. Until next time, peace.